Welcome to In The Workshop. Making a condenser oil trap with a boiler feed water preheater coil part 3. I made the condenser oil trap with the boiler feed water preheater coil in parts 1 and 2. So in this video I'm showing how to make a very simple yet very effective mounting base for the condenser. And the mounting base comprises of three components. The metal plate upon which everything rests and a couple of pieces of good quality hardwood. And once this base is finished, the entire assembly is going to be screwed to the baseboard. The baseboard of what, I hear you ask? That's the baseboard of the steam plant that I'm going to make with the 504 boiler that I've just been renovating. This Stuart 504 boiler that's now in very good condition will form the centrepiece of a really unusual steam plant. There's nothing really unusual about a 504 boiler but I'm not going to use a spirit burner because that is uncontrollable. Instead, I'm going to use a gas burner. I've just bought one from Forest Classics and the address is on screen at the moment. I'll be making a video about the special mounting that I'm going to construct to house the burner inside the 504 boiler. But for the moment, it's back to the mounting for the condenser. As you can see, I've drilled all the holes in the metal plate. In fact, I drilled four too many. More about that in a moment. I'm about to mount the side rails onto the metal plate. And these hardwood side rails, which have been chamfered to take the radius of the condenser, will be mounted as you see here. After drilling pilot holes, the rails will be mounted to the metal plate using countersunk screws. And spot the non-deliberate mistake, I got a bit carried away when I was drilling the holes, so I drilled some on the lines that were just showing the edges of the mounting rails. But no matter, I'm mixing some body filler and I'm going to fill these up. And we all make mistakes, said the hedgehog climbing off the hairbrush. I don't make too many, but when I do, they're generally quite good. So anyway, I'm just filling up the holes and I'll grind off all the surplus filler, leaving no trace whatsoever of the holes that were in the plate in the wrong place. Once again, I could have used JB Weld for this. It would have probably been better, but it takes 24 hours to harden. And as car body filler takes 20 minutes or so, I thought I would use that because it's just quicker. I'm putting a generous amount of body filler on this plate because then when I grind it off on the belt sander, it looks like this. So now it's time to paint it. First of all with etch primer. And according to the directions on the tin, you need to leave this for 24 hours before giving it another coat of anything. So really to save some time, I need to paint both sides of this component. So I made this. This is a piece of plywood with four panel pins hammered into it and this allows me to turn over the part to paint the top of it. OK, there'll be four little tiny marks underneath but I think I can live with that. And the day after, when the etch primer was fully cured, I painted it with black paint. In the same way, I painted the underside first, then once again using my special support with the four panel pins, I was able to turn the part over and spray the top. This old piece of plywood with four panel pins sticking out of the top is a very useful thing to have in the workshop. And just in case you're wondering how I'm going to mount the condenser, I'm going to use this stuff. This is boiler banding. I'm going to use three lengths of this around the condenser and screw it down to the base itself. The first part of the job is to cut one piece of boiler banding to the correct length to go around the condenser and down each side. And once I got that right, I cut two more. And in this clip, I'm drilling holes in the end. And you will notice that apart from the piece of wood in the drill vise that I'm resting on, I also have a piece of steel clamped in there very tightly. So this allows for repeat positioning of the pieces of brass in the drill vise in exactly the same place. So therefore all the holes are in exactly the same place. Utterly simple, completely non-technical, totally unscientific and really easy to do. And yes, for a very short time, I did have a girlfriend like that as well. And that's enough of that sort of thing, because it's now time to fasten the brass banding to the wooden side rails to hold the condenser in place. This is also very easy to do. I hold a brass band in place, drill through one of the holes, tap in size for 6BA, and then thread it about halfway down with a 6BA tap. You don't need to go all the way down, because the bolt will cut its own thread. This clip shows me fastening one of the brass bands to the wooden side rails using a socket in my screwdriver to tighten up some hexagon bolts. I think the brass hexagon bolts look better than screws for this application. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank a viewer who complained that I hadn't made a video for a day or so 
Well, this is very true because this time of year is quite busy for my main job. I'm currently composing, performing and recording some music for a show. So I have to really give that my attention because that's how I make my living. You have to remember that this is my hobby. Although mainly thanks to my Patreon subscribers, I do make some money at this as well. I'd like to thank each and every one of my current Patreon subscribers for your help. It really is appreciated. And if you're not currently one of my Patreon subscribers, the address is on screen at the moment. You may be wondering, what am I doing with the back or spanner, a quarter by 40 threads per inch tap in a pin chuck, and an excellent PM Research cast elbow? Well, these are supposed to be quarter by 40 threads per inch, but I don't find them to be so. They're very, very tight if they are quarter by 40 threads per inch, because none of my taps go in there easily. So what I generally do is just open them out with a known quarter by 40 thread tap. And that way when I've threaded the quarter inch copper piping, quarter by 40, it does actually fit into the elbow. This elbow is going to be threaded onto the end of the piece of brass pipe that comes out of the condenser. And this in turn is going to be silver soldered into a coned union. Because this piece of brass is threaded and screws into the elbow, I could have made this part in its entirety in the lathe, but I much prefer the look of a soldered joint. And here's the finished thing. So this pipe is the exhaust pipe that takes the exhaust steam from the condenser and pipes it up to the chimney via the union under the front of the 504 boiler. What I'll be doing very shortly is making a short series showing the building of the 504 steam plant. And I hope to continue this as soon as my workload gets a bit less in the real world. For the moment, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.